hey, uh, don't look at my unmade bed. So ever since I started grad school a couple years ago now, I've started to have a really different perspective on my experience as a disabled person and um, basically how I've interacted with different systems that are supposed to provide services for disabled people or haven't interacted with those systems. And um, it's weird saying this because a lot of people exist who have no formal education and are really great advocates and organizers and have a really good like systems perspective on things. But I've just like never been inclined that way. I never really had the ability to kind of see how things that personally affect my life come from like policies or just the way certain organizations have operated for a long time um, and aren't really about like one individual person deciding to do something to some other individual person or um, at best I would just kind of anthropomorphize everything like the government hates disabled people the world hates disabled people and to be fair I do think that like bad policy that affects disabled people like is a sign of ableism but it's not as um it's not as anthropomorphic as that um as someone deciding to do something to you specifically because they hate you and the reason why this is something that i'm thinking about a lot is that for you know most of my adult life i was living on a pretty low income and a high cost of living place and struggling in a lot of ways because of that and could have really you know should have tried applying for different things like disability bus pass like you know lower cost disability insurance like you know disability subsidized housing um you know uh, vocational rehab but never applied for things like that because um trauma feels like a big word to use for this but i think trauma can be a continuous small thing um I had a lot of trauma and just distress over the lifelong experience of having a significant disability, but having many people brush it off, think that I was faking, um, and sometimes be in situations that were really bad, um, where like my well being or my safety was in danger, but um, people simply didn't believe what I was experiencing. Um, but then also just like the the distress of like feeling that other people think that you're lazy or that you're faking because they don't believe that you're disabled like all of those things were so painful and overwhelming for me to have kind of poked on that i couldn't like i couldn't even really fathom things like applying for like a disability bus pass because i was like they're going to reject me and say that i'm not disabled enough and um, I'm just like not going to be able to handle it. I'm going to spiral, which I probably would have. You know, like I, I was going through a period of time when I was trying to see a specialist for my chronic pain and my, um, my PZP kept referring me to specialists, but the specialist office kept saying things like, um, we can't accept this patient because our policy is that somebody needs to have like such and such symptom and you know, we don't have any evidence that this patient like actually has something medically wrong, um, something like that. And back at the time in my life when that was happening, uh, every time that I wasn't able to be referred to a specialist, I would just have like a very strong distress reaction and just kind of go into a depression because my perception was that like the world thought that I like didn't deserve treatment or services for my pain or thought that I was faking my chronic pain or something like that. Um, to be clear, like, I don't think it's right that that happened to me, but now I can kind of see it from a more systems perspective and understand like this probably is like the policy that their office had, that they could only take a certain number of patients. They probably didn't have enough funding or enough staff to take everybody. And so they had these rules about who they would take, which may have like may or may not have been good rules, um, maybe were the best rules given that they had a limited number of spots, but um, to me at the time I couldn't really see things from that perspective and all I could see was 
that this was like a personal judgment on me. And so because even that was so distressing, like, you know, every so often I would kind of get it together to try to go to the doctor and try to be referred to a specialist again and just like have experiences like this again and again and be so distressed. Um, because that was so tough, I never even went out of my way to try to apply for other things that I might have been eligible for that might have helped me. Um, because of the level of distress at thinking that people would think that I wasn't really disabled or that I didn't really count as disabled. Um, because everything felt so personal to me. So um, I just have like a really different perspective now. And the perspective I have is that a lot of the time benefits and services and everything are not, um, eligibility for them is not really objective. Like people might say that a program is like for disabled people, but it's for disabled people who know about the service and apply and have appropriate support to get it. And like, you know, keep following up and like calling people if, um, you know, their application gets lost. Like, it's not just for disabled people. So like, one example I've been thinking of is like, you know, a lot of people who apply for SSI get denied. And it's kind of like well known in the community that like you often get denied the first time. You have to keep applying or you have to appeal after you've been denied. And um, I've, I've always been able to work, but I always thought, oh my gosh, that would be so horrible to experience, like the, the personal judgment that you would feel when you were denied the first time. Um, anyway, so thinking about it, like, first of all, you know, different workers who are going over applications may judge applications differently or may just like make an error. So people could be denied or accepted who are identical people just because they had a different worker. And um, then once you've been denied, if you are somebody who kind of figures out how to go and get like free legal representation to appeal, then you probably will be able to have a lawyer come and prove that you were eligible for SSI and you'll be able to get SSI. Whereas somebody else may just like give up because they're like, oh, I was denied. So, um, those two identical people, um, one is not more disabled than the other because they have SSI. They were just better at getting SSI. And like, obviously to, to critique this, like what's really frustrating is that a lot of the time like aspects of disabilities can be what makes it harder for people to try and get benefits for themselves. Like it's frustrating because it's kind of like the more you need stuff, the harder it is to get stuff. Like services that are for poor and disabled people are so laborious to get. Whereas if you are like, you know, if you're super rich, you can just like see a doctor, like any doctor or specialist that you want, like a lot easier. Um, and then like, you know, the poorer you are, the harder it becomes to do that, which is really unfair, but like, Moving on from it being unfair, which it is, I guess I just think it's really worthwhile looking at things more as a fight, like basically trying to get everything that you might be able to get, that it's okay to apply for something because you think you might be able to get it, and even keep fighting to try to get it if it would benefit you. Um, it's not bad to apply for something even if you think that there's someone more disabled than you in the world um it doesn't benefit them for you to not apply because i think people who kind of are the gatekeepers for welfare services so like in this case people who are like appealing and denying applications there's often this kind of like organizational culture and mindset because these services are underfunded of kind of like that you may get in trouble if you're giving benefits to too many people. So it's not just about like, oh, I'm like the moral arbiter and I'm gonna judge who's really disabled. It's really like, okay, I have to make sure that I do deny some people so that I don't get in trouble for like giving this to everyone. So when you think of the fact that like people actually have that motivation, then you can really see how it's really not about you. Um, 
So really, you shouldn't be accepting it if you don't get something that you think you need. Like, you should try to advocate for your rights and get it. But even your rights are this kind of like messy thing because your rights kind of just depend on what you were able to get in a certain situation. I um, didn't apply for a particular service when I was younger because a friend of mine had a difficult time applying and was rejected for a very bizarre and unfair reason. And at the time my perspective was, oh, that must be like the policy. That must be like the view of that like entire program that they would reject someone for this reason. So there's no point applying. But, um, you know, in reality, that may have just been the way that, like, they do things in a particular place or may have just been, like, the person who showed up that day to see my friend. Um, yeah, uh, that's basically what I'm thinking about. This is, like, a little bit incoherent, but I'm hoping to do a lot more writing and talking about it after I finish school because I think the level of kind of, like, being triggered and like distressed that I used to experience that kept me from trying to get things for myself um may not be shared by everybody but I feel like I have met some people who it is shared by and I also think just like a lot of people could probably do with seeing things from this perspective when they're trying to get services for themselves or other people